Hello everyone. Recently I was at a bookstore and there was a book when I was there that I saw and it's like I can't leave without this book. And this is the book. <laughs> Crayola, a visual biography of the world's most famous crayon. And I finished it last night. So uh I mean, it's a very colorful book. <laughs> One wouldn't expect anything less from Crayola. And I did learn some interesting facts about Crayola that I didn't know before. But they're... The words themselves do seem a bit sparse. Although, admittedly, I am having some trouble focusing lately. But, uh... What is also in here is every so often they will show artwork by other artists who use Crayola crayons in unusual ways or interact with Crayola crayons in unusual ways. And the artist in me is like, hey, I wanna make something too. So we're gonna knit with crayons today. That's what we're going to do. I have some crayons. I think I may still have some from when I went to the Crayola factory, which I think has since been renamed. And, um, I, I want to go back there, <laughs> but I also have like this round thing. I'm guessing this is 120. I'm not sure. Maybe it's 96. Anyway, we're going to knit using the regular crayons and we're going to knit using the twistables, which I found out I am older than the twistables. I mean, that's not really a surprise in that case. I did find out in Crayola terms, I am as old as their 96 crayon box. <laughs> uh, crayons still smell amazing. Let's see what color appeals to me today. I mean, honestly, this looks very, very close to my favorite color of all time. They call it sea green. I would have gone like, if I had seen this without it, it would just would have been, like, a mint green. It was interesting, like, some of the facts that I learned. Like, um, what's it called? Uh, turns out Crayola is responsible for the red-sided barns that you see in the American landscape because they found out, hey, we put, like, this paint with the iron oxidized on it. And that prevents the wood from, like, deteriorating. So yeah, Crayola is responsible for red barns. Who knew that? And they came up with dust before the crayons. Feeling kind of orangey today, honestly. I mean, this is radical red. This is a nice color. I'm not really feeling that. I am feeling whatever this is. Atomic tangerine. Okay. What's this? Neon carrot? Neon Carrot versus Vivid Tangerine. I mean, on the screen, these probably all look the same. <laughs> now, I can see how this is more carrot. <laughs> um, this is whatever this orange is. Macaroni and cheese. Oh, I remember loving that one when I was younger. Also, I found out that they retired Dandelion. I didn't realize they retired Dandelion. Hey, this is Dandelion. <laughs> I liked Dandelion. I must have had these crayons for a while then. Hmm. Apparently Dandelion went on a whole retirement tour and I missed it. There's this pink one here. What's this pink one? Cotton candy. I found out there was a pink called Piggy Pink, and I was like, I remember that term. This is Carnation Pink. I should probably make something with the crayons soon. Did I pull this one out already? Lavender, no. Yeah, their lavender does look more pink than purple. And this is probably the ever famous peach right next to it. Yeah, this is Peach. They said they came out with like the Colors of the World crayon box, like back in 2020. 
But for some reason, I remember using that at a much younger age. I, like, the book says it came out in 2020. But I have, like, vivid memories of me using, like, coloring supplies that are, that were supposed to ref reflect colors of the world. And I thought Crayola did it at a much younger age than 27, which is how old I was in 2020. Ooh, there's a sparkly green. What's this? It's a glitter crayon. It doesn't even say the color. There's a purple. Oh, this is eggplant. What's this green here? <gasps> this is the aquamarine. I saw this swatched in the book and I was like, pretty, pretty. Um... What's this orangey one here? Unmellow yellow. Then we just got melon. This looks like red violet. A jazzberry jam. Maybe that one got renamed. This is cerise. I mean, I could be doing this all day, but Let's just pick some to actually knit with. Um, we'll put the neon carrot back. We'll attempt to knit with the two tangerines. I cannot remember if I've ever actually eaten a tangerine. I feel like I probably have and I just don't remember it. And considering that tangerines probably have like a similar texture to oranges and I don't really like oranges I probably haven't like seeked out a legitimate tangerine in a hot minute I remember like going to seek out a pomegranate and that was hard to find let me tell you um Pomegranates are such an effort to eat. But boy, does that effort make you feel alive. Like, you literally have to break it open, and it's so involved. Like, literally, because I didn't like the texture of the pomegranate either, and it was kind of bitter. And it was so messy. <laughs> um... But I feel like I must have had a tangerine at some point. I just don't have any memory of eating one. I know, I know I've had like tangerine flavored things. That's inevitable in this society to have like fruit, fruit flavored things. But to eat actual, like the, the actual fruit when the texture is like, Ugh. oh, this is having the same problem that lots of things have where Everything's tightening up except the cast on stitch. Okay, I mean. Honestly, they're not that bad. Oh yeah, something else where I found out. Apparently Silly Putty and Crayola crayons are like part of the same company. Like Crayola bought Silly Putty. I did not know this. <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. Crayola bought Silly Putty. <laughs> I never imagined the two together before. It was... Like, wow. <laughs> Silly Putty was quite an important part of my childhood, too.
There you go. So that's knitting with the regular crayons. And much like other things, this width, like, actually it's not really the width that's off-putting, it's the length. Because uh, this is actually like the width somewhere between a typical size 4 and size 6 needle. U.S. sizes, I'm not sure how that translates outside the U.S. But this is a like ac actually like this is the perfect like tapering for a knitting needle pretty much and this is like the perfect width it's just a little bit too short and also like the paper here kind of like provides just enough friction for the yarn that the yarn doesn't catch on it but it prevents the yarn from sliding off which I feel the yarn would be sliding off a lot more if the paper was taken off of the crayons. Yeah. So we're gonna take this off. We're gonna try, try the twistables now. I'm gonna put these back in somehow. There we go. I don't even know if all these things are in here. What is this color? Oh, this is Purple Mountain's Majesty, which compared to the paper on this, this doesn't look purple. This looks gray. <laughs> Although I, I put this on, it does show a little bit purple on the white paper. Part of the book actually like explains like, um, what's it called? It just mentions like every color they have and they mention like which one like what's the smallest box size that color shows up in. Oh yeah, and there's a sharpener in here. Like a crayon sharpener. It's like a smart idea. Apparently this is supposed to be like, ooh, it has the stadium seating look. I'm gonna put that back over. Lay that over for right now. Here are the twistables. And I think we're gonna go for whatever this color is. The blue green. Go for a purple. The blue violet. Oh, just like my hair. <laughs> um I did worry about like the environmental impact on this, but Crayola, according to this book, is actually like taking huge steps to like work towards that. Like they have collected leftover crayons in the past and apparently like they have started like running off of solar power. I think they used to work off of a water mill. And apparently there's like, I read something about them reusing the marker casings. I, I don't quite remember that right now. I should be in bed, but I'm not. Um, something that I used to do when I was younger was I would go to like the Crayola thing and I would laugh at a lot of their products because a lot of... Like, they make products with little kids in mind. That is a pretty noble thing in itself. But the way that it... Well, I was more cynical back then. But also, it was like... Um, how do I put this? They had a lot of, like, no-mess products. And a lot of no-mess products are... We're going to make something that only works on this type of paper. And that seemed like a cash cow. It's like why you're going to offer the thing for no mess just so they spend more money just to get this particular type of paper what useless art supplies these are if they only work on a particular type of paper and i mean to be fair i'm no parent <laughs> if i ever do have kids and they end up writing on my wall i may feel differently 
about that. But for now, I'm still of the opinion it's like, yeah, they, they wrote on the wall with crayon. They're not the first kids who have ever done this. They're not the last. There are ways to deal with this. And honestly, they're more versatile this way. <laughs> that being said, bringing these into museums, um, the twistables, so easy to get like a quick coloring thing with them. Like, I'm not necessarily going to sit down and create like the most in-depth piece of art. Like I am out of practice. The last time I tried to go to a museum to paint it didn't quite work out. Well, not paint, but draw. It's like I had a hard time focusing because it's been so long. But also like it's very quick. It's like, okay, I just need to put the color here, put the color here. Very handy. And this is where the, I'm pretty easy to hold too. Like that. I forget what row I'm on. Anyway, if you're an art museum, like I, I, I do have like standards for museums that I go to. And one of the standards that I have is if you are an art museum and you don't allow people to draw your artwork, you're trash. <laughs> you should be allowing people to draw the artwork while they're there. Fortunately, they allow photographs so you could draw them outside. But it was like there, I've come across two museums like that and it's like I've, I've left those museums going, how dare you? And there was like a third museum that allowed drawing, but it didn't allow color. And it was like, it wasn't, that one is only half trash. <laughs> uh, I can understand allowing art products in general or like minimizing the art products because like it can be easier to clean certain things and crayons are a little bit harder to clean. Anyway, that's the knitting. About the same. Also, another thing that I use to measure like museum exhibits nowadays is, um, is what I'm looking at in the museum. Can all the information be translated to a web page? Like, if all the information in the exhibit was translated to a web page, would it lose anything? If the answer is no, the exhibit isn't worth it. The whole point of museums at this point is if it could just be translated to a web page, there's no point in even going to the building, right? But if it's more interactive and you see things that can't exactly be translated to a web page, then it's more worth it. The Crayola experience the last time I was there absolutely cannot be translated to a web page. It was super interactive. So worth it. I'm thinking about going again. There have been other exhibits recently where it's like I'm just reading posters and it's like, really? This, this could have been a web page. <laughs> anyway, that's my art history degree. And uh, that, that's you guys benefiting from my art history degree. <laughs> my bachelor's in art history. So, uh, yeah, that. I can knit with crayons. Like, again, this is a little bit harder to knit with the twistables because, like, the ends are a bit more blunted. Probably because I these twistables look like they've been used more than these other crayons, which I feel like I probably should use at some point. I just have to think about what type of art project I wanna make with them now that I found them again. Oh, what's that color? Spring green. Oh, that's also another very pretty color. I like spring green. Anyway. I could probably just sit and ramble all day yeah, as I was saying, um, like, this is also, like, the, even though it's not, like, even though it's not, like, pointed, 
this is like a width of like an eight to 10 knitting needle. So also like a comfortable length. And the fact that it's slightly longer makes it a little bit better. Unfortunately, because my hands aren't sweating up a storm, the plastic isn't too slippery and there's just enough friction. So if you're in a bind, crayons can do. Yeah, uh, anyway, that was today's entertainment. Have a nice day.